On Monday, a judge is going to punish Jacob Wetterling's killer, essentially closing one of Minnesota's most notorious kidnapping cases. Today, Danny Heinrich's attorneys filed a sentencing position ahead of his next day in court. In it, he says, it says rather, for 27 years, he kept to himself, worked a job, and never touched another child. He willed himself to be a better person, but that did not change what he had done. It goes on to say, it is not expected that this information will make anyone feel sympathy for Danny Heinrich. We should at least recognize that he is a human being who feels remorse and over the past 27 years has shed countless tears for Jacob and his family. But Danny Heinrich was not the only suspect on law enforcement's radar. Now it's coming back in pieces. WCCO was the only news crew there as the first publicly named person of interest in this case. Dan Rassier got his personal property back from the Stearns County Sheriff's Office. The agency kept it all as evidence after searching his property six years ago. Rassier told Liz Collin why he believes closure in this case came too late for him. It's a story you'll see only on WCCO. Hello. The property return took place on the same long driveway that so much of this story did. You got the two cars, same driving pattern, same driver, local person. I kept telling them that. For decades, Dan Rassier recited what he saw to Stearns County deputies the night Jacob Wetterling was kidnapped. Common sense would have solved this case day one, the same night. Instead, Rassier says he lived under a quiet cloud of suspicion across the street from where Jacob was last seen. He kept talking to investigators, took a lie detector test, and underwent hypnosis. But when Stearns County shifted their focus to an abduction on foot, they used statements Rassier made over the years as the reason to dig up parts of his family's farm and publicly name him a person of interest. Just doing everything possible to help them and then have them do what they did to me. Rassier says he demanded his property back a few years ago. He says Stearns County turned him down and implied Rassier should move on, saying they've left him alone since that search. If that's their attitude, that they can leave you just hanging from a rope in front of the public's eye and pretend that they haven't done anything, and they're not going to give me the box back. After recently hiring an attorney who made the request again, Rassier had his belongings returned Tuesday night. News stories and videos about the abduction, a chair, bags of dirt, and a wooden chest that had been in the family for generations. It's the chest, but I think they took it apart. Rassier says he knows the items will seem insignificant, but it's what law enforcement will never be able to return he's really after. Like what happened when a third grade girl told this longtime music teacher she couldn't be in his classroom if no other students were there. It's just a little bit of a window into what happens when the police do this. Liz Collin, WCCO 4 News. Stearns County told WCCO the case remained open and it couldn't return Rassier's property because of that. As for the condition of the broken chest, deputies say that the lab took it apart for testing and it will look into whether it can be fixed. Remember, it took six years for Dan Rassier to have his belongings returned. But in court documents that we found, Danny Heinrich had his shoes and tires returned in 1990, 13 months after they were, after they were first taken for testing.